Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the Art and Science of Watch Collection. Uh, today what I want to do is to find some watches, all of which have what I'll call a, a, a brand manufactured movement, or I guess you'd call it an in-house movement. And what they have, they're, they're high quality watches but I tried to find some that seemed to be especially good buys. So let's take a look at the ones I found and get your opinion. Uh, the first one is one that is, I've always liked it. It's, it's the Gerard Perigo 1966. It's a very much of a sort of an executive watch, dress watch, without costing a fortune. Um, it had the caliber. The thing about Gerard Perigo calibers is they're long. This one is called the GP zero three three zero zero dash zero zero three zero. It's a four hertz twenty eight thousand eight hundred semi oscillations per hour, and it's basically three handed with a date window over at three o'clock. But it's a very clean looking watch. It's what. Clean watches like this is sort of like a, to me, they're like a Calatrava type of cleanness to it. When I used to have my Calatrava, it was very, very clean, very, very open. This one's got one thing that may be a little much, but not too much. It's got some diamond indexes, but they're not they don't seem to be very blingy. They're just there as indexes. Now this next one is one that is is really interesting to me. And this is a Nomos Glashuda Lambda. Uh, and it's a limited edition of steel. Most of the Lambdas uh, are gold, I think maybe possibly in uh, platinum, but I think most are either white or rose gold. But they made 175 that were steel, and so they were much lower. This one, uh, the MSRP on this was 7,500, and the the next cheapest one that's not steel was 17,000 something. So to me, this looked like, you know, really a good one because I, I, uh, I really like the, the, this particular Nomos. I like Nomos in general, but this one I liked a lot. The DUW 1001 is the uh, name of the movement. It's got, uh, it runs at three hertz, 21,600 semi-oscillations per hour. Uh, it's got this swan neck regulator that I like. Whenever I see a swan neck regulator, I know that they haven't stuffed silicon in it. <laughs> and I'm glad to see that. Uh, I also like the hand wound. It's to me more of what collectors would collect. And uh, so anyway, the thing was, I had a devil of a time finding one of these. I found one on eBay for sixty-four fifty, and uh, that was it. The MSRP was seventy-five hundred, so there isn't a whole lot of difference. And like I said, I only found one. There was an eighty-four hour reserve, and they sort of advertised you only have to wind it twice a week. So, anyhow, now this next one is by a brand that. I just have not warmed up to. I've always sort of liked the looks of them, but I never was sure about the movement. They're one of those these brands that seems some of them are ETA, some are this, some are that. Now, I'm not saying anything is wrong with ETA, but if you're going to get an ETA movement in a watch, you shouldn't have to pay a whole lot for it. Okay, now this one is was wonderful. All right, I get these these emails with this uh, one particular company, and they they have all of these unusual watches, and some of them are unusual in 
nobody probably would ever want them and or very few would and others are uh, some incredibly good deals some of which i regret passing up well when i saw this one the caliber fm 1700 is a frank muller uh caliber and looking at the those two finger uh bridges down at the bottom and the sort of the S bridge that goes across the middle. Uh, this this is just a very cool watch. 18,000 semi oscillations per hour, manual ones, all of the things that you find in the most expensive, the very best watches, watches by uh, Kari Butenlan and uh, Gerbel Force. Um, uh, just uh, so many of the tip-top watches are of, are like this. Um, it's got two barrels, but they're in series, which means one goes and the other one kicks out. The one we just looked at, the um, uh, the Nomos Lambda, also was uh, two barrels in series as well. It's got a Breguet hairspring, and I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, <laughs> It's not the new Breguet Harrisburg. Uh, and you can see it has a very interesting looking, sort of like a, it looks like a, a woodpecker um, regulator, which is a type of swan neck regulator. Uh, seven day reserve. Man, this is a nice watch. The MSRP in this is 14800 I found one for 6950 That's new. This brand new with a box and paper. This is from this place uh, called Jay-Z and F. Um, I had the uh, the name of the, the, the link there for the person to contact if you're interested in this one. I thought that was sort of interesting though. Now, the next one is a Piaget Polo, another watch I've always liked. I tend to like the blue or the white, but the black is nice too. The black is uh, more formal and with a, it's sort of a, very much of a sporty uh, watch. And um, rubber straps are fine for if you're doing a lot of exercise and stuff. But if I got this watch, I'd get another strap. <laughs> So uh, what I found, I found a new one. Uh, the MSRP is 11,600, and I found a new one at Joma Shop for 8750. Uh, it's got the base movement in, and it is a Cartier 1904, 1904 PSMC. Now you might say, well, I thought you said they were in-house. I did. It's Piaget's in-house. <laughs> no, not Piaget's in-house, it's Cartier's in-house. Here's the deal on that. Uh, that particular movement was used not only by Cartier, but also by um, Piaget. And I believe a version of it may have been used also by Vacheron Contentin's, um, oh, what is it, they're 56. So it's a, it's more than just an off-the-shelf movement, even though I suppose you could say it is, but it's not a not a cheap movement, I'll put it that way. Uh, automatic, 4 hertz. It's not an exciting movement, but it's, you know, pas small. And an interesting one, too. Okay, uh, now this next one is another one that I really like a lot. This is the Glass Huda Original Panel Reserve. Now, the thing I like about it uh, has to do with this double, I guess you'd call it sort of a double swan neck, sort of a butterfly um, regulator that they have. Now, they have this on the panel inverse, it's on the front, and on the panel, panel reverse, it's on the back. I prefer it on the back because you got a little more real estate on the front for timekeeping, date keeping, and power reserve. Um, this is a hand wound movement. Another thing that I like about it, it is four hertz, which I'm not crazy about. It's got a big date, which I like if you're going to have a date. 
but boy, this is a honey of a watch. I really like it a lot. Uh, now, what's the big deal about the the double uh, swan neck regulator? Well, one, you regulate the uh, frequency, and the other one, you regulate the beat. And so that, I think, is a very cool thing to have for doing fine regulation. Now, Glasshood Original is owned by Swatch, but with this, with the, the double swan neck, they couldn't stick in one of their silicon hairsprings. So this, this one, like I said, this one I really like a lot. Okay, um, now this next one is actually two. Uh, the Bulgar Reacto Finissimo, this watch has won uh, grand prizes, uh, uh, GPHG grand prizes. And it's really a very, the, the problem with I've, I've always had with it isn't that anything other than the price. I'm not saying it's overpriced because I don't think it is. It's just something that spending that much money, uh, looking at the MSRP of 13.5, was be something I wouldn't particularly want to do. And uh, I thought, well, if you wait for a while, I bet the price will come down, and sure enough, it has. Uh, the one I found uh, pre-owned was 7270. So it's a kind of watch, it's a steel version, and uh, it has the, the Bulgari BVL 136 movement. It's automatic, it has a 50-hour reserve, and it has a 3 hertz frequency, 21,600 um, semi-oscillations per hour. So to me, it's a nice, nice watch, and, and, and it's a classy watch, and it's one that I think is, you know, way, punching way above its weight, so to speak. Now, on a real, uh, it's sort of a, a money diet. This other one I found, now I used to talk about, in fact, I got one for um, one of my sons, was the Bulgari Octo Roma. And, I, and they're still a great buy. They really are. But then I found the Octo Solo Tempo. And the thing about the Solo Tempo, the, the uh, Octo Roma has a BBL 191 in it. And I didn't realize the Solo, Tema, all, uh, Solo Temple also had a Bulgari movement. Now, when you say, well, you know, at, what is a Bulgari movement? They're owned by LVMH, uh, Louis Vuitton. So there's Louis Vuitton also owns Zenus with their uh, D5 labs for their movement maker, but they also have their own movement maker. And to tell you the truth, I, I'm not positive whether the Bulgari has its own separate little movement maker or is part of one of the um, ones that LVMH has. LVMH has got lots and lots of money, right? So they could get their, they can take good care of their wards uh, quite well. Uh, so anyway, so the BVL 193 automatic 50 hour reserve, 28,800 semi oscillation per hour. I found one for 29.72. So I'm mean, if you for a real budget, we're a really nice looking watch. Uh, the one that Sean's got a rubber strap, I'd swap it out and get a, 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 a leather strap or a gator strap, something else like that, or even a, a bracelet. But uh, there's some good buys, I think, uh, for those. Now, the last one is, is sort of interesting. This is a Cartier Drive de Cartier. And this is a watch that is not wasn't that popular, but it's a it's very much of a guy's watch. Uh, the caliber Cartier 1904 PSMC, as I mentioned, this was also used in the Piaget we just looked at, and also possibly in the Vacheron Content 1056. And so it's you know it's it's like I said it's sort of in the house and it's in the house of Richemont. 
uh, 48 hour reserve, 4 hertz, center hour, minute, small seconds, and then date over at 3 o'clock. Now, the MSRP on this watch is really funny because I found different MSRPs, right? They, I don't think this particular model in steel is still being made. Uh, the Santos, I think, is getting all of the attention right now. And so when something else is getting the attention, this is the kind of watch to look for, for a nice watch with a nice movement while they're paying attention and charging higher prices for another model. Uh, so anyway, this is one I always sort of like. Anyway, those are those are some of the watches that I picked. If you have any of these, I'd really like to hear from you. And um, this is an opportunity to subscribe if you like. And until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collections.